Yes, we are live here tonight with Mavs in flight. How do you see things going in the second round? Moo Green Devils. I know some of you fans out there have been wondering if Greenville is invincible. And we found out last Friday night that indeed the Green Devils are not invincible. They are beatable. In fact, they were beaten last Friday night. In a shocker, East Hamilton wins over the Green Devils. Well, in my 40 plus years of watching football, I've seen a lot of stuff, but one thing in all these years I have never seen, and I didn't even see it in this game until I rewatched the film Rock, Paper, Scissors. I've never seen two kids from opposite teams on the line of scrimmage play Rock, Paper, Scissors, but now I can put that one on the list. Check this out. This is Dorian Goddard for Greenville and number 10 for East Hamilton during the whatever that stuff was that happened before halftime where East Hamilton and their goal for the game to make Greenville punt was about to happen. These two, I guess, bored with the shenanigans going on, decided to play rock, paper, scissors. And I asked Dorian in practice yesterday what that was all about, and he said that the East Hamilton kids were pretty cool. There was no trash talking, at least not with them. During that, the kid across the line of scrimmage said, you want to play rock, paper, scissors? And Dorian says, sure. So good job, guys. You've added something to my list of things seen at a football game. In case you're wondering who won the Rock, Paper, Scissors, the kid from East Hamilton actually won. So, hey, congratulations, East Hamilton. You can add something else to your list of accomplishments against Greenville. Not only did you make them punt, you also beat Dorian Goddard in Rock, Paper, Scissors. The winning hand, Paper Covers Rock. Incidentally, why do people usually start with scissors in Rock, Paper, Scissors? You know, paper gets a bad rap. People hardly ever use paper in rock, paper, scissors. And when they do, it usually wins. Come on, people. Get off of the rock and scissor bandwagon and hop on the paper trail. Okay, so look at here, boys and girls. It was round one of the TSSAA 4A state championship playoffs last Friday at Burley Stadium on the hill in Greenville, Tennessee. And the Green Devils welcomed from Chattanooga, East Hamilton. Hi, right, George. You're on. All right. Uh, the final score of the game is going to be 63 to 7. Greenville's going to win and move on next week. Who's going to win next week, Anderson County or Elizabethan? Uh, I like to get another shot at Anderson County. It's going to be Anderson County, Greenville, Ground 3. Let's bring it on. That's right. The final score, Greenville 54, East Hamilton 21. But basically, these first-round games are almost always a mismatch. Something needs to be done in the TSSAA about these first-round matchups. I've talked to a lot of different people about what they think could happen, and I've heard all kinds of suggestions. Uh, one that I like is maybe the number one seed to getting a bye in the first round. Uh, my personal choice would be to reduce the number of teams that make it to the playoffs. And of course, I think there should be a requirement. I think you should have at least a 500 record to get into the playoffs. There's 0 and 10 teams making the playoffs, and that's just crazy. And one thing else I'd like to see done is after the after each classification finishes their tournament and a champion is crowned, I'd like to see the six classifications face off in a mini tournament to get a true state champion. What are your thoughts, Green Devil and other fans? Let me know down in the comments section. Something to talk about before we move on to round two. Greenville welcomes Sullivan South for a rematch of an earlier game this year where Greenville went up to Death Valley and 
well, they put death on the Rebels. I can't even remember the score. It seems like it was 60-something to something. Probably more of the same in this game. And then we can get to round three. The round that everyone, everyone is waiting for, looking forward to, and can't wait for. Now, another game in round two that will be exciting and all eyes will be on it, at least in 4A, is Anderson County and Elizabethan. Last week, Anderson County dispatched Union County rather easily, and Elizabethan struggled with Howard. So that's got a lot of people wondering, hmm, can the Cyclones actually compete with Anderson County? And I've said all year that I think Elizabethan will upset Anderson County in round two. Now that we're close to the game, I, I'm honestly not quite so sure. Either way, I think whoever plays Greenville in the next round is clearly facing an uphill battle but a battle that either one of them will be eagerly looking forward to. Everyone wants to dethrone the champ at any sport, and 4A high school football in Tennessee is no different. A lot of teams are really tired of seeing Greenville at the top all the time, kind of like Alabama in college football. Somebody wants to kill the beast, and that's the same here in high school football. Someone wants to kill Greenville and get them out of Cookville. Four games left to determine it all in high school football. Second of those happens in just a couple of days. Who's your team? What's your pick? Again, let me know down below.